Today is July 28th, Friday, 2017. It is day 190 in the Donald Trump White House regime. Today we find out that Donald Trump fires Reince Priebus. But the main question still stands. When will the military come home to fight the wars in the homeland? Yes, we are struggling here in the homeland. 95 million Americans have no job. And they tell us, or Donald Trump tells us, is he's going to send all the gang members back home. Really? And that reminds me of something they used to say. What was it? If a tree falls in the forest and Bravo Von Mueller is not there to hear it, did it make a sound? That's where we're at today. You see, I, don't, I didn't see no video footage of gang members being sent home. And I'm pretty sure you have not seen that video footage either because it does not exist. Oh, I guess it's possible that Trump's not even going to send them home. He's just going to lock them up, and it'll probably cost the American taxpayer, what, $200,000 a year to food and house and clothes. And, you know, they get the little three square meals a day. They get to do their socializing, and it only costs American taxpayers a couple hundred thousand a year per inmate. And, of course, the Wall Street, Goldman Sachs, vampire scum that's going to be making millions off the prison industrial complex, well, they're fine with it. And that might be Donald Trump's plan to make the Wall Street corporations that are involved in the prison complex, make them rich and make America poor at the same time. But I got a better idea. Why don't you hire a bunch of Gentile journalists like myself and we document the government sending them back across the border, sending them back home? Because until I witness it with my own eyes and I videotape it with my own camera, it did not happen. It's just one big dog and pony show. It's a circus. But that won't stop Trump from talking about it. Trump says, we're going to destroy MS-13. How dare they come into America and wreck havoc. We have laws here. I am Donald Trump. Again, all one big dog and pony show until I get video footage. So this is a little piece of advice. Since Donald Trump is surrounded by dual citizens who don't have a clue, let a real Gentile American give Donald Trump some advice. Yes, hire some Gentile American, born and raised American journalist, and they will be like wartime correspondents. Remember in Vietnam they had the wartime correspondents and you actually got to see the truth. Funny, we don't have those wartime correspondents today over in the Middle East, do we? But actually, the war is really back home. The war is for America. And what we need is wartime correspondents that are trailing the police. And if need be, we might even need the military. That's why I said, when is the military going to come home and actually fight the battle in the homeland. Why are we 5,000, 6,000 miles away fighting somebody else's battles when we got a huge battle right here on the home front? This is treason. This is tyranny. This is traitorous treason. Of course, Congress is in on it. Of course, the Senate is in on it. That's the president's job, to inform Congress, to inform Senate that if we do not fight the wars on the home front, that they are treasonous traitors and they will be brought up on charges. Oh, imagine that. The President of the United States bringing Congress and the Senate up on charges of treason because they're sending our troops 6,000 miles away when our military needs to be here on the homeland fighting the homeland war. All Americans realize this. This is common sense to all real Americans. I guess the problem is there really ain't no common sense in Congress, is there? There really is not any damn common sense in the Senate. Either they're completely and utter morons, either they're complete idiots, or they're being blackmailed, or they're being blackmailed by a foreign power to fight somebody else's war. You know, you have to figure that out on your own. 
So, am I optimistic that the communication director, Antony Scaramucci, is going to give Bravo Vamula a ring on the phone? Ring-a-ling, ring-a-ling. Bravo, this is Antony Scaramucci. We need wartime correspondents to follow the police around, homeland security and the military as we send gang members back home across the border. Can you film this? Can you document this for America? As a born and raised American citizen, are you ready to do your job? No, I am not optimistic I'm going to get that phone call. Scaramucci will talk to his boss, Jared Kushner. Oh, you didn't know that Antony Scaramucci bows down to Jared Kushner. I think he, he said something like, Jared Kushner is like Hamilton or other some American hero. Yes, Scaramucci literally gets down on his hands and knees for Jared Kushner. He'll go in the office probably on, Mr. Jared, who should we call to be that journalist? And Jared Kushner will meekly say, Oh, I think I got somebody over in Brooklyn, a dual citizen friend. He's a really nice fellow. He works in a flower shop over in Brooklyn. Give him a call. I don't think they're selling very many flowers now. Yes, he'll be perfect for the job. He's one of my friends. Yes, we trust him. The fact is, until I see videos of the gang members being escorted across the border... Video footage from my Sony camera, quite frankly, it did not happen. And quite frankly, I believe the police need some help. I think the police have their hands full. We've got all our troops over in Afghanistan. And our police, well, they got their hands feel, filled with uh, Australian yoga women who, you know, slap the car, the, the, the patrol car, and they shoot the woman after she slapped the patrol. I mean, the fact of the matter is, our police cannot handle the job. I hate to say it. So, I'm not here to say that we need martial law. No, I'm here to say that we need to stop the invasion. And if we have gang members in all the major cities and they have tattoos covering their body and they cannot get a job, who, nobody's going to hire you when you have tattoos all over your body. You've been born and raised in another country, and you've come over to America to raise hell. We don't need martial law. We need special units. That's what we need. We need special units to take these gang members, like I said, and escort them across the border. I do not want them put in prison. I do not want to pay $200,000 a year to feed them, to house them, so they can socialize and work out in a gym. No, that's nonsense. I want a Gentile journalist to accompany special units. Yes, that's why I say we need to bring the military back home. They are needed here. We need special units. We need a civilian Gentile journalist to accompany them to document it because if we don't see it, if it's not on mainstream media news, then nobody's going to hear about it. You see, once we document it, people will stop coming here. That's why you have to document it. There's no reason to keep it a secret. Matter of fact, it's not even happening now. But here's the thing. If Congress and the Senate and the special judges, if they get in the way, then the American people will bring them up on charges of treason. I repeat, if there's any congressman out there or any senator or any judge who's brave enough to get in the way of the American people, bring it on because the American people will bring you up on charges of treason. This is what we want. We want special units. We want them all to come back to the homeland. We're going to round up the gang members and we're going to escort them across the border and all we're going to say, have a nice life, but you're not going to raise hell in America. You're somebody else's problem now. And no, it's not going to cost us $200,000 per inmate because Americans are broke. Now, if there's any congressmen out there listening, did you get it? If there's any senators out there, do you hear me?
Because you better wake up and smell the coffee. Because if you don't come to the table and negotiate with us, we will bring you up on charges of treason. You traitorous bastards. Enough is enough. He's exactly right. I mean, we've got people from Pakistan getting paid big bucks in Congress to spy on the congressman, and they sit around and do nothing because they're scared. So, here we go. We do a Google on Donald Trump today, and apparently I'm back on the target list because the NSA is only going to allow me to see about 12 million results in .59 seconds. So the big news today is, yes, Donald Trump fired Reince Priebus. Trump also gave a speech to law enforcement. Some people were alarmed by that speech. I did not have a chance to hear it yet. But mainstream media is calling Donald Trump a lame duck officially. And what I find strange is it took Donald Trump six months to figure out that that nonprofit corporation he now works for, the Republicans of the neocon world order, they're plotting against him behind the scenes. Donald Trump is figuring it out. He fired Reince Priebus, who is nothing but a Republican shill, and he's replacing him with General John Kelly as a chief of staff. Now, there have been some generals in the past that have held that job. It's not very common, I believe, for a, a big general to hold that job. This might be just a sign of the times. I mean, it's very dangerous waters that we're treading now. I mean, that D.C. swamp is vicious, the deep state. It's my opinion. I'm going to speculate a little bit here. Uh, Americans, they voted for Donald Trump. They hired Donald Trump because they thought he was an outsider. They thought he was not a career politician. And for the first six months, Jared Kushner destroyed that reputation. But maybe Donald Trump is trying to regain his status with the American people to, as being an outsider. The problem is, is it's almost impossible to do the work that we need done. I believe it's nearly impossible for a president to do that work sitting in the D.C. swamp. So it's my opinion. I may not, we may not live to see this. It may be way down the road. I don't know. But it's my opinion that the next real American who gets elected to president if it ever happened. You know, a real born and raised American who has loyalty to America only. I believe that that is ever allowed to happen. If that real man is elected, I, don't, I do not believe that he should even walk into the Washington, D.C. swamp. I believe that he should lead from another city. I believe that leader will probably lead from many other cities. Maybe he picks Cleveland or Pittsburgh or I don't know what city he'll pick. But you literally cannot bring America back in that D.C. swamp. That would send a message to the congressmen and the senators and all our dual citizen masters that if you get elected and you do not even walk into Washington, D.C., those people are going to be scared because the real president would be in a real city somewhere else and he would be leading by example. And, of course, we're probably talking about a very dim scenario, a time when maybe, I don't know, 150 million Americans have no job. The problem is our masters, the people who have taken over our country, they do not want to surrender. They do not want to wave the white flag. They literally own all our congressmen. They own our senators. Of course they own Jared Kushner. What's old Jared Kushner up to? Well, he's hired a dream team of lawyers public relations people, and real advisors. He's going to lead from behind the scenes. Jared Kushner is still going to have control of the power, but he's going to do it through lawyers and PR people. How convenient. Jared Kushner will never have to come out from behind the curtains again. He'll have high-paid lawyers to tell Americans what to do. You t I tell you what, I prefer this marshy wetlands of Washington, D.C. 200 years ago to the D.C. swamp today. Jared Kushner and his people have turned Washington, D.C. in a real God-forsaken swampland. Real Americans don't even want to walk into Washington, D.C. Unbelievable. So what else? Okay, people are talking about uh, 
10 co-workers you should avoid, like the plague. Yes, I believe Jared would be one of those people. And we've talked about the dream team of lawyers. Democrats, Democrats are moving to revoke Jared Kushner's security clearance. Well, that's no problem. Ivanka and Jared will just lead from behind the curtains with lawyers and public relations people. Congress and the Senate will not, will not say anything because all Jared has to do is call up BB. BB, the congressmen are treating me badly. And then BB will get on the phone. This is BB, congressman. Do you know that file I have on you? Get back in line. I, don't want, I do not want to have to call you again. BB out. Every time I see our congressmen and our senators bowing down to a foreign power, I literally want to scream. Steve Bannon has a shadow press office. I have no idea what that even means. A shadow press office. So Anthony Scaramucci not only attacked Ryan's Priebus, he also attacked Steve Bannon. Remember, Scaramucci is with Jared Kushner. And uh, he says he's getting possibly getting a divorce. And he says, leave my family alone. See the glasses? He's serious. Leave my family alone. I'm Scaramucci. His wife is filing for divorce. You talk about making some bad decisions. I mean, first, the millionaire got married. Mistake number one. And then second, he took a government job when he's got $80 million in the bank. And now his wife is divorcing him? I mean, it couldn't have happened to a better banker. Couldn't have happened to a nicer banker. You see... If you don't realize this by now, all you congressmen, all you career politicians, if you haven't figured it out yet, Americans despise bankers. The people who pay your paycheck, the lobbyists who bribe you under the table, the bankers, we despise them. And of course, Anthony Scaramucci is in the banking business. Doesn't surprise me one bit. Yes, he'll be working for the big banks. He'll be working for Jared Kushner's friends. Wouldn't be surprised if he kicked Steve Bannon out the door or put him in some faraway office, far away. Yes, this guy is a banker. Worse than that, he's a Goldman Sachs vampire scum banker. Unbelievable. You know who he's working with, working for those dual citizens. He's a traitor. He's a traitor to his own people. Wonder what his father thinks. God rest his soul if he's still alive. So Donald Trump is going to sign the Russian sanction bill. He was pretty much trapped into that. I mean, nothing he really could have done. Congressman, his own, his own people, his own nonprofit corporation he works for, the Republicans, they set him up. His own corporation set him up. Didn't matter whether he vetoed it or approved it. He was going to get hammered for that. Well, Russia is probably not going to take it no more. Russia says, hey, you do it to us, we're going to do it to you. We're going to cut your staff in Moscow. We're going to seize your compound, your warehouses. Yes, I believe that Putin's had enough. What it really comes down to is the, elite, the alliance, the Russian, Chinese, Persian, Ottoman alliance is getting stronger by the moment. And what's good for the goose is good for the gander. See, America has overplayed her hand. I've said this many times before. We are weak. We have 95 million people out of the workforce. I have no job. I have no pension. I have no hope. This is the American empire? Come on. Give me that correspondence job. Let us kick out the, tr the people in this country who are destroying this country. Bring our people back home. But no, they don't want that to happen. Sadly, I have witnessed, I have experienced people in our government who want to bring America down. They've done this on purpose. That's what I've come to believe. At first I thought they were just stupid, idiot morons, but now I come to believe that they've done it on purpose. Let's see if we can't find some other interesting news. We've already talked about Trump firing Priebus. Kelly's the new chief of staff. Trump confirms he will sign the Russia sanctions bill. Who knows what's going to happen with Bitcoin. Now this is an interesting story. Steve Wynn claims that his Macau casino booked a $10 million loss. I believe that this is just 
a precursor. He's trying to warn his corporation there's some serious things going on in the economy. But more importantly, there's some serious things going on in the casino business over in Macau. You see, the Las Vegas casinos are only making it because of the big money they were making in Macau. But I've made videos on this subject before where I said that fine, sooner or later the Chinese are going to take away those casinos from the dual citizens. The dual citizens over there are Steve Wynn and Sheldon Adelson. They've made a fortune, billions of dollars. The reason why the casinos in Las Vegas are still have lights shining and they're not, they're not boarded up is the amount of money that the casino corporations made over in Macau. The problem is there are some powerful people in China that I believe they want to change the scenario a little bit. You know, maybe have the Chinese billionaires making all that money instead of Steve Wynn. So Steve Wynn and Sheldon Adelson, they're going to come up with these silly excuses how they lost this amount of money. I was in the casino business, I can tell you that the take, the percentage, the hold is right about the same every month. It does not ever change that much. The variance doesn't change. What happens when the percentage, when the hold goes down, the percentage of your win, when it goes down dramatically, there's only one thing that's happening. Somebody's cheating. The problem is it's their territory. It's their land and they're powerful. I'm not going to tell you names, but... Steve Wynn is in his 70s now. I don't believe Steve Wynn is strong enough to deal with these people. So he's going to send out excuses. Oh, in 50 years of doing this, I've never seen this happen before. Oh, it's happened before many, many times. And when the drop goes down that dramatically, they send in the wise guys and they figure out who's stealing. But who are you going to send to Macau? Who are you going to send to China? They are in control of the whole thing. Steve Wynn and Sheldon Adelson, they had a good run, but that run is just about over. And funny, you don't really hear of Steve Wynn being Trump's advisor anymore. Early in the game, Steve Wynn was an advisor to Donald Trump. Sheldon Adelson, he was there at the inauguration party. Yes, these big casino moguls, they have the in with Donald Trump. But you don't really hear about it anymore because it was bad publicity. It didn't look very good. But then China also knows that these casino owners are good friends with Donald Trump. It all ties together. That's why you got to be very careful how you deal with the Chinese because they have a million different ways they can come at you. If, you have, if you're making billions of dollars in Macau casinos, you got to be careful. You don't insult them over chocolate cake. <laughs> oh, that chocolate cake was so good, wasn't it? Now, here's the bad news today. That the Western Gentiles, our sperm counts are plummeting. Because you don't have any job. If you don't have any job and you can't take care of the woman and you're self-medicating and whatever, that's what's happening. Our Gentiles, we are being terminated. We are being exterminated, the American Gentile, as they bring Pakistanis in to work at Congress. Can you imagine? American, real American, born and raised Americans with their thumb up their ass and they bring Pakistani spies into Congress. I wish I was making this shit up, but I'm not. Oh, and the good news. Or is this just fluff? We're going to get a special counsel to investigate that Comey, Lynch, Clinton crime family. I don't believe it for one moment. These people are untouchable. They are literally untouchable. Okay, we're going to wind this segment down. Another sort of a lie. Yes, the Americans were not happy about the national anthem protest, but sports, sports have been on a decline for a while. People have more important things to worry about. And I do, I do agree with this. Amer many Amer the younger generations are suffering, especially the snowflake generation and some... They don't know how to think on their own. Everything has to be politically correct. If everything has to be politically correct in your mind, you're not going to be able to understand everything, snowflakes. Okay, so this I thought this was strange. We're not really getting too much of this out there. It's in, maybe at the bottom of the newspaper or the back page. 
General Motors is extending their shutdown, their summer shutdown. I didn't realize that, but in the summertime, they shut down over there. I didn't really know that, but they're extending it. People know, people know, know that the car bubble is coming down hard. I mean, uh, they're just not selling cars. I don't even think Americans can afford the big car payments. This car bubble is sort of like a little tiny housing bubble. I mean, it was all it was all pushed by the government. The government, I think Obama pushed the uh, the car bubble. You know, pushing people to buy cars they did not need. A major trash company shuts down. Alt Space shuts down. Their employees will be let go by July 31st. I mean, things are looking bad. I do not believe that there was a huge Chinese company that called up Trump and said, oh, we're going to build another factory for you, Trump. No, I didn't. I don't think that happened today. We don't have the... Ch Can you imagine the Chinese building 10,000 huge factories that could employ 10,000 American deplorables? I mean, come on. Chinese are going to take care of the Chinese. They're not going to build all the factories we need. Chinese are going to take care of their own people. If they do sprinkle a few factories over here, you know the bosses are going to be Chinese. Unbelievable. Sea Ray boats laying people off. Walmart's laying off some corporate offices. General Motors plant. We, Yeah, lots of people laying off. The house did okay a down payment on Trump's border wall. Only problem is, we know who's going to build the biometric border wall. It's going to be dual citizens. Yes. Over there in Mumbai and other the dual citizens who control Mumbai. I mean, it's all game. Not going to be any real American companies building that wall, unfortunately. Oh, they might let a few Gentiles walk around and pick up the garbage, pick up the trash you know, along the wall. You know, little labor jobs. But the owners of the companies, no, they will not be Gentile Americans, no. All the owners of the companies who get the permits and get the license and the contracts, they'll be dual citizens, without a doubt. Probably friends of BB. What a shame. What a shame that America can no longer have real Americans who own real businesses. No, the Federal Reserve banking cartel will not let Gentiles survive. No, we are to be exterminated as their people win.